Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting the standard error of measurement using Excel. The standard error of measurement is a statistic that allows us to quantify how well an instrument can yield accurate results. Now, when I use the word instrument, I'm looking at this from a counseling research perspective. So the instrument would likely be some type of psychometric instrument. But standard error of measurement applies to any type of assessment, test, or instrument. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data, and I'm using career aptitude scores. So I have 50 scores that represent career aptitude and this could be for any specific discipline uh, of interest, any specific career. And from these 50 observations, I'm going to show you how to estimate the standard error of measurement. We use samples like these to estimate the standard error of measurement because this statistic helps us to understand how far a score on this instrument would be from the true score. So every participant that takes this career aptitude test has a true score. They have a true score that represents a score with no error. And we never really can know what this true score is. But we can calculate the standard error of measurement and then using that, develop a lower limit and an upper limit. And between those two limits, we can know what the probability is that the true score will be in those limits, be between those limits. We call this a confidence interval. And one of the most common probabilities is 95%. So we try to use the standard error of measurement to generate a 95% confidence interval. We want to know there's a 95% probability that the true score falls between a lower limit and upper limit. And I'm going to show you how to calculate the standard error of measurement, the z-score that will give us the probability that we want, and those lower and upper limits. So in this Excel workbook, you can see that I have some of the cells that are grayed out. Uh, these are grayed out because I have formulas, and I'll show you how I develop these formulas. And then there are cells that are white, and these are values that we input into this worksheet. And there's actually only two uh, for standard error of measurement. It would be the reliability and the alpha, and I'll explain both of those. But first, let's start with the mean. So we want the average score for the career aptitude test. And you can see I just use the average function, so it'll be equal sign, average, and then I'll select A2, and then control shift down arrow, and enter. That's how I I built that function fairly straightforward. You can see it yields the same result, 51. Then moving down to the standard deviation, this is a sample. So we're going to want the sample standard deviation. So it's going to be stdev.s. I'm going to select a 2, control shift down arrow, and click enter. You see it yields the same value, 8.36. Now reliability, we're going to type in. As I mentioned, this is a value that we have to produce to calculate the standard error of measurement. And there are several different types of reliability statistics that are used depending on the situation. One popular statistic is Chromebooks Alpha, and another is the intraclass correlation coefficient or ICC. I have separate videos that cover these topics. So here let's just assume 
uh, the reliability is 0.8, which would not be an unusual reliability value for a psychometric instrument. So I'll just type in 0.8. And the alpha value, again, we just enter that in. We set the alpha to set the probability for the confidence interval. So an alpha of 0 0.05 would give us a 95% confidence interval. An alpha of 0 0.01 would provide us with the 99% confidence interval. So I'm going to go with 0 0.05 as that is the most popular value for alpha. Next we have the z-score. And this z-score is going to correspond to the alpha value. So if we have an alpha of 0 0.05, we want to be able to calculate the z-score so that the negative z-score all the way to the positive z-score, in this case, contains 95% of the values under the curve. 95% of the observations. And we know in this case that negative 1.96z to positive 1.96z account for 95% of the observations. So the function here is norm.s.inv. And you can see there's only one argument, and that's probability, and that would be 1 minus the alpha divided by 2. And enter, and you can see we get the value 1.96. So now with the statistics that we have available, it's easy to calculate the standard error of measurement. We know it's the standard deviation times the square root of 1 minus the reliability. So we would start with equal sign the standard deviation, then shift 8, the asterisk, open parentheses, sqrt for square root, and then 1 minus the reliability, which is in cell E6 here, 0 0.8, to close parentheses and then hit enter, and we have the standard error of measurement 3.74. And then you can see to the right here we have the confidence interval. And this is simply the z-score multiplied by the standard error of measurement. Now if we were interested in the 68% confidence interval, the standard error of measurement would be multiplied by 1. So it would be equal to itself. So this confidence interval would be 3.74 if we wanted the 68% confidence interval because we know that the true score has a 68% chance of falling between the mean minus the standard error of measurement and the mean plus the standard error of measurement. The 95% confidence interval is the most popular so I will multiply the z-score times the standard error of measurement. And we can see the confidence interval here is 7.32. So to calculate the upper and lower limits of this confidence interval, it's fairly straightforward. It's the mean for the upper limit plus 7.32 and for the lower limit it's the mean minus 7.32. So you can see I've calculated the same values that I have here in the gray cells. And then moving down to the, this formula below these statistics we can see there's a 95 percent chance the true score is between this lower limit, 43.68, and the upper limit, 58.32.
This formula is a sentence builder and I have copied it over here in this sheet so it can be seen more clearly. I put an apostrophe in front of it so that it display in this manner. And you can see it calculates the percent and then I use the text function to format the lower and upper limits so that only two digits to the right of the decimal are displayed. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting the standard error of measurement to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.